Hello, and welcome to the Go Get the World podcast with me, your host, Matthew Gavin. On this show, I chat to experts from all areas of foraging and wild food to bring you their favorite plants, recipes, tools, and techniques. And there's even some great conversations about life thrown in as well. So thank you for listening. Now, here we go. So today on the podcast, we have someone who I've known for a number of years, Michael Kelly, a former IT specialist, co-founder of Grow It Yourself, or GIY as it's better known. His organization works with individuals, communities, companies, and other organizations to help empower people to grow their own food. Michael is the author of three books, the latest receiving a Gorman World Cookbook Award, and his multi-series TV show, Grow, Cook, Eat, originally on RTE, has recently been picked up on Amazon Prime. Welcome to the Go Gather Wild podcast, certified local food hero, Michael <laughs> Kelly. Not sure, not sure about certified, Matthew, but uh, thanks very much. Lovely to be here. It's great, great to be chatting to you today. We know each other just to give people a, a bit of a reference um, and, and listeners. Myself and Michael know each other for a number of years now. I was previously in a company called Innocent Smoothies, Innocent Drinks, as, as a lot of people know them as. And uh, we've done a lot of work with GRY. And it was it was one of my favorite times of year when the big row came up and we'd go down to Grow HQ and I'd get to walk around with Michael. And it's, it's honestly like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory for people who enjoy food. And That's anyone cool. listening, it should be a destination in Ireland to, to go to because it's one of those things you look at everything and you can eat it you know everything around it i remember we walked through and there's different varieties of strawberries i've never seen before like and, and i was just amazed that bush over there can you eat that and you'd be like yep yeah, and this and that <laughs> so it's it's one of my favorite places to go um, and i totally recommend it but that's how we know each other this yeah is you're very kind yeah so we're we're 10 years into the big grow at innocent now this year believe it or not which is amazing yeah. so it's been it's been a great great partnership for us yeah, definitely. And it's something we can we can touch on later. Yeah. I'd love to get started out. I mentioned there in the intro that, you know, you were actually in IT originally. Yeah. And strangely. It's strange. It's a, it's not something people expect an, an IT professional to, no. you know, f- first of all, you know, be think about think about growing and, and growing your own food and then to to get, have an organization like GIY in itself. So how did it start? And, and, and let's start from there. You know, what's the origin story? Yeah, um, it's funny, like, uh, like it seemed, I don't know, it was a peculiar to IT because it's such a hyped sector, you know, that, that the, you often meet like disgruntled former IT people starting weird stuff. <laughs> uh, I've met loads of people over the years, like who got out of IT to do something else. So um, yeah, like I, I, I was working in IT, um, as you said, like post, post-college did, uh, did kind of 10 years with with um, an Irish IT company you know I was in on the sales side of things so it wasn't like a techie but I was um, I was selling IT systems effectively and kind of just like my my life kind of changed in a <clears throat> in a kind of a road to Damascus moment which is kind of you know I often marvel at how random these things are but I was in my it was probably around 2005 um, and uh, you know, I, I guess I was I was kind of coming up around 30, something like that. Um, and, you know, it was it was I was I was kind of into food like most, you know, most people that age, I guess I was starting to really, <clears throat> really enjoy my food, but but not really thinking about where it came from, I guess. And, and um, you know, just in a, in a supermarket one day, tr- flying around, throwing stuff into the trolley and literally um it caught some garlic i was about to throw into the, into the trolley caught like the label kind of caught my eye and i could see it it was it was from china um in fact i think at the time it said fresh from china on the, <laughs> on the label that was the brand name fresh from china um and and so like it just really shook me out of my sort of torpor i guess like just uh the why was something being imported from china i just i, I think it was the first time i'd seen a food import you know coming all that way like I guess it was it was such an extreme example of how how kind of strange our food chain is so I just really started getting curious from from that day on about about the how the food chain was set up and start started reading about it and 
um, you know, of course, you realize then that it's the, the Chinese garlic is just the, the tip of the iceberg, literally. Um, but when I when I realized when I was thinking about garlic or reading up about garlic that it actually can be grown in Ireland, I decided to do that and try it, try it out. And so like literally went out to the garden with a shovel and, and, and dug a bit of, you know, turned over a couple of sods. Uh, did a bit of digging and and um, I don't know if your listeners have kind of ever ever grown garlic before but it's I was kind of lucky I started with it because it's a very straightforward thing to grow like you literally break up a bulb of garlic and stick the individual cloves down into the ground like they go you know about about an inch underneath the soil and um, you get um, eventually that kind of clove, each of the cloves splits and turns into a bulb. So it's like this magical sort of circular uh, process that's that's just unbelievably straightforward. And so I, I, I was lucky I started with that and not something harder to grow like tomatoes or whatever, because <laughs> that might have been the end of that. Um, but uh, so it grew away and, you know, over in the corner of the garden and, and gar garlic has this very kind of almost like an early warning system built into it. Like it kind of, um, it, when it's ready six months later, it, 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 it there's a sort of a, a tug of war happens between the stem and the bulb where it's sucking the nutrients down into, into the bulb. Um, and so the stem kind of dies off, like goes yellow and then brown and then kind of falls over. Um, and I didn't realize this, I just thought it was dead. Um, I was very, very disappointed with, with my garlic experiment and then went to dig it out and there was this like magnificent bulb of garlic underneath the, the soil and just, just was completely blown away by like just smitten by the idea that I could produce this, this amazing piece of food in my own garden. Like I was just, I was absolutely fell, fell like just head over heels in love with the whole process from that day forward. And, and that was really the start certainly of my my growing journey you know my my interest and my passion for for food growing that i've been laboring away under ever since you know yeah and it's it's a it's a fair old leap to to giy and actually yeah. founding an organization to go from growing garlic you know is it's it's very entrepreneurial or did you you know did you get almost pushed into that was there a circumstance that made you say you know i have to leave my job here and i have to do this yeah, it was it was an evolution, I think, Matthew. You know, it wasn't it wasn't there was certainly no big big sort of aha moment at the very beginning. I think I think what happened was um, I, I I kind of I was trying to probably for about three years I was I was growing whatever I could and and trying to learn because there's so much to learn. You know, it's 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 always food growing as as you know it's a sort of um, it's, it's quite straightforward at a basic level, but then around that, there's just so much to know and learn. And so I was, I was trying to do that. And then I think I was, I was realizing along the way that I wanted to, to meet other people who were doing it, to learn from them. And I joined a gardening club here in Waterford, which was like, to, you know, completely not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then just decided to set something up myself. You know, it, it, it kind of was as simple as that. Um, and um, so I, I literally put an ad in the paper. It was around, around uh, summer, late summer 2008 um, and said, you know, if you're interested in growing your own food, come along to this meeting. And that was the start of it. And, and it, was, it was very much, you know, almost personal self-help group for me. And then, and then local, you know, fantastic local group that was, that was, you know, 60 or 70 people kind of meeting up once a month in the library in Waterford City and, and you know, sharing the journey, learning from each other. It was brilliant. Um, and then I suppose the, the critical kind of piece in the evolution was um, uh, a couple of people around the same time approached me about setting up GIY groups in their town or village. Um, it was originally still in Waterford, one in Tremor and one in, one in Dunmore East. Um, and so that was sort of the start of a process where I think I was starting to realize there's, you know, there's the demand for this idea elsewhere. Um, and then having to write it down, you know, so we, we wrote a, a guidebook, I suppose, about, about what, it's, what is a GIY group and what, what does the local champion, as we called the person starting one, you know, what, did that, what do they need to do? 
Um, so we were we were sort of inadvertently, I think, creating this franchise structure effectively um, that that grew unbelievably quickly. Like it within, I would say within six months. I mean, I can't remember the exact details, but I think around probably around six months in, there might have been you know twenty GIY groups around around the country, and then we started. We 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 wanted to sort of have an event um, in Waterford to sort of shout a bit louder about the idea and, and bring people who are interested in starting a GIY group in their area to, to Waterford to find out more. And so we attracted funding, a small amount, I think it was like five grand from Social Entrepreneurs Ireland who are still very active in, in, in the space of, of supporting social entrepreneurs. I didn't even know what a social entrepreneur was, to be honest, um, but we got that funding. And I think that just, you know, we, we got sort of connected to, to the sort of whole universe of social entrepreneurship and, and meeting other, other um, social entrepreneurs. And that was really the start of it. I think probably within, within six months of that, we, we'd set, up a, set it up as a company and, a, um, um, you know, the starting point, I suppose, of my, my transition away from my IT and from working into into starting to work initially part-time for GIY and then and then full-time and then a few other people joined the team and on and on it went <laughs> and yeah. then it was like hold on for dear life and, <laughs> and that's been my my general <laughs> my general sort of uh, stature ever since you know holding on for dear life yeah I've seen and I've I've seen it <clears> firsthand <throat> and like the impact that GIY has on people and and the work it does, you know, and the value of that work. And, and it's really something when you experience it firsthand is amazing to see, like from doing, you know, the big grow with children uh, is, a, is a really great thing. So the big grow just, and this is a bit of a plug here for Innocent. So yeah. you know, feel free to drop in some smoothies, folks. Uh, thanks. But, <laughs> the, but that campaign, and, and just in general, when you teach kids to grow, at a young age like you, it depends on obviously the school you go into but a lot of the time you ask people or, or children you know where do your carrots come from and they say the supermarket they'll say spar or super value or duns whatever it might be mm. or little you know aldi but actually it's very rare you they know where it actually comes from and this is something you introduced me to this term food empathy mm. you know, and that's the really i think uh, like you can speak more about it. Is that the core of GIY, you know, to build this food empathy amongst people and, and what stems from that? Yeah, I, I think I think it was slightly retrospective in that food empathy kind of phrase. Um, I, I, I don't think we intentionally set out for that to be the goal, but I think I think really, really the goal originally was always about get people to grow. Right. And I think I think what we started to realize over a period of maybe three to four years at the start was that actually what was happening was that people, you know, I, you know, it was, people were starting to uh, grow food and they were, they were, you know, getting better at it, but really they were, they were growing maybe five or 10 or 20% of the, the food that they could eat, you know, if they were, if they were, if even that, you know, yeah. um, but something remarkable was happening along the way, which was that they were by, by dint of that, food growing um, at whatever level they were they were learning about food the food chain how it's set up they were learning about seasonality they were learning about you know what what real freshness tastes like and and why it tastes different uh, they were learning about the soil and and um, the connection between the soil and health and and nutrition and 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 sustainability and um, you know everything about their their behavior and their knowledge and their attitudes toward food was changing um, so we we coined that phrase um, food empathy to describe what was happening because that was that's what it felt like you know there's a I I'd be a big believer that there's a big 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 lack of empathy in society generally never mind just food but certainly in the world of food there there is so it felt like the right phrase to describe what was happening and and that completely changed you know our approach to the work because I think we felt okay this is we're not a self-sufficiency movement we're not saying we need to tear down the structures of the food system and um, we're not you know we're not saying people who want to should live off grid forever and ever and never engage with the supermarket again and um, what we're saying is that 
if we can encourage people to grow food, then it, it has this tr transformative effect on the relationship with food in general. And that's where the change happens, you know? Um, so I think that, that sort of meant that we felt our job then was becomes about scale, you know, get as many people as possible to, to grow food. It's not, it's not necessarily about depth, you know, we're not, we're not sort of trying to get down in the trench beside you and, and, and teach you every single thing. Um, we, our job is primarily to get you, get you up and running, um, get you, you know, successful at it. And, and, um, that, that's, that's the job. And then, then it becomes, okay, the fun part is trying to figure out how many, like, what does real scale look like? You know, are we talking, are we talking a hundred people, a thousand people, a million people or, or a hundred million people? And that's the, that's the fun part and the organizational challenge at the same time. Yeah, definitely. And, and you speak to that kind of empowering people to, to do it themselves, you know, and that's really like grow it yourself, but we're here to help you at the same time, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's, um, it's a very, it's a real sort of transformative process for people. Like it completely, you know, as you, as you said, like it has, sometimes we forget with our, in our obsession with scale that the individual stories are, are incredible. You know, the, the, the children and, and adults learning to grow for the first time and the impact it has on their lives is it's just it's phenomenal to watch yeah definitely and and like I used to even have it at my desk a little seed pod and I'd be growing you know the the shoots in my office in a little cup and uh and it does it's it's something about this mental health side of things you know when you there's an immense sense of pride you feel when you've when you've grown something yourself and you can put it in your own sandwich at lunchtime and it's come from your desk or it's come from your back garden or your allotment or whatever it is and you're using it in your food so there's lots of different examples of that yeah like the i always call it like the tom hanks moment you know the movie castaway where he's where he's he's marooned on this desert island and then like he's he's out in the depths of despair at the start and then he he he, he finally gets a, a fire lit on the beach you know and it takes him like several broken hands practically and and uh you know trying to figure out how do you light a fire without without any any help you know and eventually he gets it going and he's jumping around on the beach bare chested you know like feeling like a god you know and there's a there's a sort of an, an element of that i think when you grow your own food like it, it is it's a it's this really elemental thing that i think is embedded deep in our dna you know to the need to to produce food ourselves um, and so, yeah, like all sorts of evidence and research shows that it's brilliant for your mental health and, you know, the, the, imp the impact of, um, um, you know, actually con physical contact with soil and, and lots of lots of evidence to show that the bacteria in soil, you know, we gets into our system is really good for our gut health alarmingly like I think that's just mental to, to consider. Uh, there's the um, the dopamine response just from even seeing plants. You know, there's the sort of general sense of optimism about growing food. Like you're always sort of you're 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 trusting something's going to work. You're looking ahead all the time. You're always thinking six months down the road to sort of figure out what you're going to do next. So I think that's a very that's a very positive thing for your mental health as well. So just on on loads of levels, it's it's. Um, really really positive thing to do for your health yeah definitely and it's that seasonality i suppose it's almost like the body's natural you know circadian rhythm it has a natural seasonality <coughs> as well yeah. the body probably in terms of like i remember eating uh in in, in grow hq and in grow hq it's a seasonal menu you know when, yeah. and it is open and i don't know if you're doing you know a takeaway now or sure. that type of thing but it's it's a brilliant menu and it's a it's a prime example and, and a shining light of what can be done with seasonal food yeah like you know seasonal food to me is that's that's such an important part of this whole d discussion and debate because um I think I think kind of quite recently in in society, like probably only in the last twenty years, maybe a little bit more. Like we've 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 um, we've changed the way we eat. I mean, we used to eat in with the seasons, obviously, because that was that was kind of what there was. Um, whereas now, I think we're we're recipe led in our in our eating, so we tend to be you know we read a recipe either online or in a cookery book or in a in a weekend papers or whatever. Um, 
very rarely is it seasonal and we take ourselves out then to the to the supermarket and you know pretty much any veg that you want is available any any time of the year so if you want courgettes this week your your local supermarket will have them even though they're not in season in ireland for you know another another four months probably um so so you could ask well so what like what's what's wrong with that but i think I think what starts to happen when you grow food yourself and you start to eat food um, literally fresh out of the soil, number one, it tastes different. And, and that's, that's a chemical difference between, you know, how food is chemically structured when it comes straight from the soil or is picked off the plant and what it will look like six weeks from now when it's been stored, you know, in a fridge and, um, you know, transported halfway around the world. It, it's just it's physically different you know and that's what you taste and um, so people will often say to us oh well I, do, I i you know i grew these tomatoes and they just they taste amazing i've never tasted anything like them and why is that you know it's it's and that's that's why you know you're you're eating fresh food that you just picked 10 minutes ago and um, so there's there's that there's that aspect of it and obviously food that's in season in our locality is 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 by definition more sustainable because it's it's kind of you know it, it's got a much su shorter supply chain for one it hasn't used up um um you know carbon and, and fossil fuels to just to get here you know regardless of how whether it's grown organically or not it's it's going to be more sustainable um and so you've got this mixture of of i'm sorry the last piece is the nutrition i think i i think though i I don't have as much research on this point, but I think it, the food that's that's kind of straight out of the ground is more nutritious as well. So you've got this kind of this kind of three sided triangle, I suppose, of nutrition, deliciousness, and sustainability that 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 you access by default when you eat seasonally. That um, we've sort of lost, you know. Um, and then and then, as you say, we're we're we've got into this. Um, this method of eating where where it's like we've the same diet all year round whereas you know as you as you said i think the body needs different things at different times of the year so i i crave you know root crops that come from the ground in the in the winter months like parsnips and carrots and stews and stocks and and soups um yeah you're not going to want that in the summer you know your body wants hydration cucumbers tomatoes like things with lots of water in them yeah um, and so on so uh, like I this time of the year I'm actually starting to go off the root crops and the stodginess of, of root of root vegetables and I'm looking for I'm looking for greens you know I, I want spinach and, and things to sort of rejuvenate my system and then going into the autumn I think you want you want um, storing up vitamin c like the berries and the the you know the the fruiting crops and things like that to sort of boost your immune system going into the winter so like if you if you don't eat with the seasons that that wisdom of nature is being is being lost um so like seasonality is a kind of it's a double-edged sword in the sense that am i am i saying you know don't eat tomatoes when they're not in season you know absolutely like you might miss your tomatoes but i think you, you have the joy of them coming back into season again in in july or june um, yeah. that and that makes up for the absence i think even in the supermarket, like the fruit, when it's not in season, does taste different. It tastes very, yeah. like oranges probably is the best example that I can think of. Uh, depending on what time of year you get oranges, they taste completely different. Yeah, totally. And uh, like sweet corn, I think, is, is the brilliant best example that I've, from a home grower's perspective, like it's just, um, you know, the, the, old, the old saying, I think, was that you, you sh when you pick sweet corn, you should run into the kitchen you know to cook it because <laughs> as soon as you do and it's, it's all about this the 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 sugars turning to starch you know so okay yeah like it it it, it, it tastes sweet and vibrant and 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 uh and fresh when you pick it and then you know a few days later it doesn't it's starchy and and awful you know yeah um, so so kind of think about your vacuum packed sweet corn you know in a supermarket that that's probably been picked six months ago um you know sitting sitting in suspended isolation wrapped in a plastic sarcophagus <laughs> and then shipped halfway around the world uh, sits on in a supermarket storage room for you know two months and then eventually ends up in your in your trolley and and you start to understand why it doesn't really taste of all that much and yet 
talk to a nutritionist and they'll tell you the sweet the two things are the same you know the they, they'll say the important thing is eat your sweet corn because it's really high in xyz vitamins and you know nutrients and so on but um like they're not the same thing that's that's yeah the and even the uh, like uh, picking avocados for example everyone loves you know yeah. these avocado on toast or whatever but uh it's you know they're so unripe and the nutrients don't actually have time to develop in them when they're picked so that you, that you might look at a you might look up say what's in my avocado or sweet corn and says it's so good for these reasons but yeah. those vitamins and minerals aren't actually even in there in the ones you get in the supermarket because they haven't developed or had time to ripen and produce them exactly uh, and, and like think about think about your tomatoes for in the same vein they're they're picked unripe in order to so that they will because what happens when they ripen they get soft and so then they get bruised in transit and and in packaging and all of that so in order to to sort of prevent that from happening they they pick them when they're ripe um and so you know you get them to your to your chef they often ripe them in transit using ethylene gas which is a natural it is a natural yeah. gas it's not it's not a chemical but um it's still, you know, it's an artificial process. And, and the tomatoes here at home that I grow in the, in the polytunnel are like, there's, there's a really fine line between them being absolutely perfect and then the, the, the skin's splitting and them gone too right. far, you know? You're and rushing it, out to get them. Yeah, exactly. And then like the even more fascinating layer, I think as, as, as a grower, um, and I, I think we, we see this a lot in Grow HQ when we think about it a lot is, what's the impact of the soil on the taste um, yeah. and the nutrition? Because that's, again, another layer that's never discussed in, when, you're, when we're talking about food. That's, and it's definitely the case. Like you get something from biodynamic you know, farms or even organic, and there's all different levels of that. And, and what do people do? I remember there was one, I don't know if it's biodynamic or, or whichever method of farming it is, that they actually, it's very much lunar. Yeah. with the times and and you'll even plant certain things in the ground as to affect the the vibe of the place um so there's a lot of different ways to do it i think that soil i'd love to talk to a soil expert so if you know one, yeah um, it would be well our, our our head grower richard uh, richard me is in grow hq he's an absolute soil nut you know and 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 like there there's something really interesting in that because if you um uh, Dan Barber has uh, the the New York chef and and sort of food activist has has spoken about this like he calls it the carroty carrot so in his restaurant he he was buying organic carrots because his ethos was organic um, from a supplier in Mexico or something and and um, he'd he'd have he'd have them for his stock pot you know because they were cheap cheap organic but still organic. And then he had he had a farm in upstate New York and he was growing carrots um, on the farm in really, you know, living, nutritious soil. Um, and they were the carrots that he just literally, you know, he'd slice up and put on a plate because they were so the, the, the flavor profile was completely different. And we, we find the same in, in Grow HQ, like over, over the years, as we've improved the soil and closed the gate on the, the, the fertility of the soil, the flavor profile and the food has changed. You know, it's getting more more delicious and more more vibrant tasting because the soil is improving all the time um, yeah. and do and you find that sorry do you find that even like crops you get more from the crop because there's more soil in it or there's more nutrients in the soil would you get more from the crops then yeah you would and you get less less problems you know less yeah. diseases and and um um yeah i mean it's 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 absolutely transforming and we found actually our our soil is quite high in nitrogen now because we're using coffee. Co like we, all of our waste from the kitchen is composted and put back out on the land. So gradually, you know, it's, it's improving all the time. And because we put coffee, you know, the coffee grinds in there as well, it's very high in nitrogen. And um, like it's, it's, it's higher, the compost we're producing is higher in nitrogen than, than even farmyard manure. Like, so if we, then, then if we had animals on site, so it's, um, it's it's that it's that amazing. impact yeah like i mean who who even thinks or talks about how healthy is the soil where my food was grown or reared in like nobody yeah and that's that bring, bringing that to kind of the, the everyday person you know a, a lot of coffee shops now people are in their local vicinity and 5k and whether it's a coffee truck or a, a cafe mm -hmm. 
like oftentimes they actually give away their coffee grinds for free because it's a nuisance for them to get rid of them. Yeah. And if you have your own home compost heap or, or you're thinking about putting one, you know, there's an amazing resource for you. That's just, that's just available. Yeah. Like we have, um, we have a, a course, an online course on our website called the ultimate starter course. So it's kind of like a, a nine or 10 month, um, course you can do online and follow follow the journey sort of of growing through the year but um it, it all starts with soil you know there's a whole episode about soil which is maybe not as you know it's not as sexy a start as people <laughs> maybe <laughs> would would want you know but like they want to get into the seed zone that's the good stuff you know yeah but, uh, we force people to wait until episode two for that because like before you start you have to understand you know the the the, the importance of soil and, and fertile fertile soil to to the to the uh the veg you're gonna you're gonna produce and and if we could if we could make that connection between the health of our soil and our own health and the planet's health i think we'd be we'd be doing something really important you know yeah definitely and your the giy website for people as well like that's a huge resource not only do you have a website that's you know brilliant and uh and you sell your your books and the thing that most fascinated me and actually it almost turned me into a kid again when i could see it is the dehydrated discs that you send out in your growing packs when you put a bit of, when you put them or put a bit of water on top of them and they yeah. just completely go up it's amazing, amazing to see you know and when you see the reaction of kids doing that as well it's brilliant but you've got your packs online you even have the t we can talk about that for a bit maybe the website and then i'd love to talk about the tv show yeah and what that's been like so your online store that has books online courses and growing packs you know it's a full resource for people who want to get involved in growing and grow things themselves yeah and and i mean we're a social enterprise matthew as i mentioned at the start and and like what that means i suppose is that we're we're funding we're funding the work we do um by selling products and services to to people to help them to grow and so you're all the time thinking about that kind of double bottom line of 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 income and impact you know and ideally you know everything you're 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 selling should be impactful but also generating income and that's you know growbox which is our starter growing kits it's a whole range of of um of, of growing kits is, is designed to do exactly that. And, and really the idea behind it was to put everything, you know, rather than standing in the aisle of a, of a, of a garden center, like looking at the, the array of different things and, and thinking, oh, you know, screw it, I'm just going to Little on the way home instead. Um, it's about, you know, putting everything in the box that people need to grow, grow food. So the, the rehydrating compost is, 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 part of that because obviously you know a bag of compost you can't fit that into a little box so it's about about giving people the the um the compost and the little pots and the the seeds and then critically the knowledge and the um the tribe i suppose to share the journey with so like we we back the the kit up with you know really really good video content that people can access on our website that hopefully takes the mystery out of it and makes it straightforward but also then you get to you know share that journey with the GIY community more broadly um and so yeah like that's i would think i think we're not we're not 100 percent there yet but i think in the last year in particular we've made huge strides in in making that you know work really effectively and it's it's absolutely taken off in the last year like i think we're we were up like 350% or something. A lot of that was down to the pandemic and people being locked down and so on. But I think it's it's a sign of um, we're doing something right with the website for sure. Definitely. And, and it's something as well for like these grow boxes, you know, there are not things that you get, like people who, who mightn't have grown before. I don't know what they are. You know, you, you literally get them and they're, there's, they're arranged from seeds. Yes, you can plant the seeds outside, you know, if you have that resource there. But if you're even in an apartment or you only have a counter or a windowsill in your kitchen, you know, it comes with cups. And you, so you actually, all you need is, you know, if you can put a coffee cup on top of a space, that's the space you need to grow. Yeah, exactly. And I, I like, I think um, I, I saw for myself when I started growing first, the sort of almost like the, 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 there was a slight sort of horticultural snootiness about, about growing. Like it was, it was all very 
very RHS, you know, not, not to diss the RHS, they're, they're brilliant at things, <laughs> but it can be very gardening and very sort of, you know, you have to do it this way and that way. And, and I think we, we, we've always wanted to democratize growing and make it ac accessible to everyone. So the big grow, which we spoke about earlier on, it like is about, you know, making growing accessible to every teacher and every child in every school. So it's not, you know, um, like, it doesn't presuppose any level of knowledge with the teacher or that they've got loads of space for growing. It can be done in the classroom and the same with our work program, which is called uh, grow circle. So we work with companies like um, Facebook and AIB and, and Diageo and, and, and teaching their employees, you know, how to grow food. So it's, it's very similar to the big grow in fact, but it's obviously it's for adults and it's, it's got more of a sustainability focus. But as you said, it's about growing food on your desk effectively. Um, or wherever your desk is currently, I suppose. And, um, you know, to us, to, to us, like a child in a, in a, in a school in Limerick is, is as valuable as an, an adult in, you know, working for Facebook in the Docklands or a community gardener in County Offaly or whatever. It's all the one thing, you know, it's all one GIY or at a time as, as we sort of sometimes say about it, you know, so it's, it's all, it's all good stuff. Yeah, definitely. And, and people, you know, when they want to get on the journey and if they make the step to either get your books, one of your books, or they make the step to get the grow box, you know, you mentioned it's supported by lots of content on the website. There's a course there as well, but there's also the TV show, which is hugely popular. And I, I'd say you were blown away by the reaction with it on, on RTE and now on Amazon prime for people. Yeah. yeah um, it, it, it's the we've we've done three series of it now we're on we're in a bit of a hiatus at the minute because of covid obviously but it's just been mad you know and and honestly matthew i've just i just love love every part i i love the the nuts and bolts of filming as well and and just myself and karen have an absolute we just have such a laugh doing it you know and we always approached it from the we may never get to do this <laughs> again so yeah. just enjoy the ride and we we every minute of it like we just we just loved it um and i think that comes across hopefully on on the show that it's like we're just having a, having the crack with it and it's very giy you know we we approached rt about it originally and said like we don't want this to be a gardening show like we want this to be a show about food and so it kind of it, you know it there's one vegetable covered per episode and so it's very much like you see it grown from plot to plate literally so it finishes with with Katie Sanderson, you know, our, the, um, uh, the visiting chef for the show, she comes in, she cooks what we've grown. So it's, it's, it's really, it's a show about food, you know, primarily. Um, and as you say, like just amazing reaction to it. I got like, I think 3 million people watched the, the second series, um, something similar for series three. And, and then it got picked up by Amazon, which was like <laughs> strangest email I ever got, you know, uh, just going, holy crap. And even like, even last night on Twitter, some woman from Indianapolis was like, oh my God, I love the show. Like, uh, like we had, we had no idea it would play outside of Ireland because it's, you know, food growing is obviously it's different depending on where you are in the world and, and your climate and your time zone and so on, but it just seems to work. So um, we're really ambitious for it because it works, you know, for obviously we, we, we kind of think about it. It's like the top of the funnel, you know, you're yeah. trying to get as many people as possible into the top of the funnel and then hopefully they get their interest peaked by, by the show and, um, and then the website is there and the GIY groups in the community are there and everything else is there to support them further down the funnel, you know, and hopefully what you get popping out of the bottom of the funnel to, to continue to mangle this metaphor uh, is, you know, is, is somebody who's, who's generating food empathy and living, living a healthier, happier, more sustainable life, you know. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, that's probably a great place to finish on it, you know, that whole there, there is a whole ecosystem there, you know, everyone has a part to play in it. And, and the more people that are aware, the better and, and whatever way, you know, they become aware of yourselves, whether it's the big Amazon, you know, or their local community, you know, whatever way is better for, for everyone on the planet. Yeah. And then, then it's about to finish about scale, you know, like yeah. we, we've set ourselves a goal to reach hundred million people, um, 
by 2030, which is the end of the decade of action for climate change that the UN um, set. And so we wanted to play our, our big part and set a ridiculous goal, like a moonshot goal to, yeah. you know, to motivate us over that period of time. And so, you know, like what would a world look like if 100 million people were, were in that time were growing their own food? Um, I think I think you'd be nearing a tipping point, hopefully, where you're 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 bringing that change into the food system that we so desperately need. You know, you've got big plans, a big vision, and and you're certainly chipping it off one brick at a time there. So, hats off to you, and uh, you. and it's amazing what you're doing at GRY. So, I'm going to continue to to monitor you, everyone. You know, you can go. Obviously, if you want to let people know where they can find you and where's best, you know, to go. Yeah, well, uh, giy.ie is the website, very simple, and, and that's the starting point for all, for all the stuff, you know. Um, the TV shows on, as I said, it's, it's, it's still on the RT player, it's on Amazon Prime, it's on our YouTube page, um, and obviously when, when this lockdown is, all, is over, come and visit us in Grow HQ. Yeah, and I can't emphasize that enough. If you're from Ireland, get to Grow HQ. Yeah. And uh, and I I I've had the grow boxes. I've I've done the things, and and it has a it does have a huge impact. So definitely, people you know visit, check out the courses, check out the books, and and get a grow box for sure. Brilliant. So Michael, thank you so much for your time. You, Matthew, it's been it's fun. an absolute pleasure, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. No bother. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Visit gogatherwild.com to see notes on what we discussed today and connect with us on social media at gogatherwild. Thanks for listening. Happy foraging.